Hey there, this is one of Indie here coming with an updated basics video about how to use sound in general for video games and later on of course specifically for Game Maker plus some fancy uh, trivia and sound theory which you can impress nobody with. So if you want to join me on this small little journey then stick around. This is one of Indie. I am a developer, so if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to the channel, of course. Alrighty, so I did a video in 2019, but a few things have changed and adapted, let's say concerning to Game Maker, and I wanted to do a better, more comprehensive video on that, so just to fill in the blanks and give you a solid start in the minimal use case so basically this is a guide for you developers if you wanna if you are unsure how to start off here there will are some timestamps so you can just instantly skip to the part that actually interests you will there be a long in-depth video about all the new sound features in gizmos which came uh, well the last few years into game maker yes definitely there will be a video but that's not it. Alrighty, so let's starting off with the content of this whole video. First of all, what is music and what are sound effects? What they actually mean in video games? So music, SFX theory in general. This is universal knowledge and of course um, coming at the very end, the fancy useless knowledge um, in there as well. Then the second part is how to set up sound files before using them in any, uh, I don't know, engine like Game Maker or Unity or Godot and God knows what. So basically just the best practice. Then the third part, how to play sounds in Game Maker. This is Game Maker specific. So if you don't use Game Maker or don't want to use it, uh, it was nice seeing you, bye bye. And how to customize and set up sound effects and just a few minimal useful things how to use them. Alrighty, so let's start off with the first one. What is music and what are sound effects? The meaning of that, the concept is fast and easily explained. Most of this is knowledge you just know instinctively. And just to illustrate that, here is a small example with no music and one with music. as you can see for yourself and of course here good music and sound can break or make a game this is super 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 important and as an industry standard developers kind of separate music and sound effects into two groups because each has a specific functionality which i'm gonna go into in a few seconds there can of course be more subgroups but let's keep that super simple how are these files being stored well there is the wave format the mp3 format which most of you will be familiar and the ogg format as a general rule there is the wave format for small sound effects so there are many which you just need to spam so their quality is kind of low but their sizes are as well low which is good and of course they are bigger which are mp3 or ogg which are larger sound files this is most of the time songs music which is just larger bigger and you need to have a higher quality of that so just to illustrate it imagine how much of a compression and quality loss you have to do to reduce the file size overall the more you compress the smaller it is but the less the quality is also so here you need to find a sweet spot if you just want to put that in the general term what is music well music in video games resembles the tone the feeling of the current level environment you are in and it is mostly being looped without the player having any direct effect on that some games do that but as a general rule you just loop it and that it it's just basically background stuff and it gives context to the current place you are in so here there are some examples which should give you an idea how it's generally done so as you can see everything has a specific use Coming to sound effects, well, sound effects are on the one hand short tunes or so-called jingles that indicate something is happening. Basically, it's a feedback thing or acoustic information, so to say. They underline the video game 
experience. The main function is to just to give the player just information about the gameplay in general. So here are some examples just to illustrate what um, SFX or sound effects are used for. And let's go to the more uh, useless part, which is <laughs> some super fancy sound theory, which is about diegetic and non-diegetic. So, so in a nutshell, diegetic means uh, what characters in movies or games can hear. So basically it could be, you know, the birds, somebody moving, stuff which is part of the world. And of course, non-diegetic is kind of the opposite. This is what the audience can hear so it could be for example um, some background music for video games or for some movie st stuff which is being highlighted but of course the characters in the movie cannot hear it because it's not supposed to be you know recognized by them so here these are the two things and now you know some <laughs> you completely useless trivia diegetic and non-diegetic for movies and for video games of course there are more distinctions by that but eh. Let's skip that part. Alrighty, so let's go to the second part, which is kind of important. You, This is a recommendation from my side, where you pre-prepare your sound files and first of all, export them into, into the file size, uh, which you needed with a specific quality in the slash compression. And second of all, normalizing your sound effects to each other so they sound together harmonious so what you're seeing here in this video is just basically taking your sound files just locking one and then exporting it to the format which you need so let's say a wave for your sound effects and uh, ogg slash um, mp3 as your sound files so as your music files and then um, well, play with the quality slider and see where this sweet spot is between quality and compression so smaller file size and the second part is of course it is recommended but of course not necessary um, to normalize all your sound files together so you just lump in, in together like you see here and then then play them together and see if um, they play harmonious so let's say the um, SFX should be a little bit louder than your music files because you let's say the jumping sound should be not too loud because you hear that a lot but let's say uh, of a jingle which is um, alerting you to something important should be a little bit louder so once again you normalize them and just pre uh, set them before you actually use them in the game but of course this is then up to you how you want to handle that hey there and this is the last part or the third part for how to use this thing in game maker which is kind of an uh, curious thing so first of all you need the sound file where you can drag and drop that in here or you can just say like hey let's create a sound file then you got this little neat little window here which is for customizing and then uh, give it a name as in the i don't know sfx 2000 i don't know something or 200 2000 just give it a neat little name and then apply um, a file which you want to link it to and then it will be loaded into game maker and then you can actually play it and check it out here a little caveat you have a slider and then let's say you set it to 0 0.3 then it will be actually played at 0 0.3 if you don't change the overall volume so you're thinking like oh sweet i don't need to use audacity and all that stuff kind of yes but for a super minimal approach because you can kick out that system pretty fast if you do something else and i'm going to discuss that in, in a few minutes so here you could technically do that and just um change the volume until it uh, it feels right and then well it's being played at this specific percentage between zero and one one full 100 percent, and then zero well nothing then another thing for beginners um Sound effects should be, you know, uncompressed. This is the default thing, which is good. And then I guess compressed, not streamed for your music files, which are, uh, I don't know, well, your OGGs or MP3s or the other stuff. Eh. Bye bye. So let's start off how we can actually use sound effects and how we can play them. So for that, we just need one thing. It's called audio play sound. 
and here you need to have three input parameters so the things which are well, mandatory because uh, without that it doesn't really work so first of all your sound id so if you just go i don't know and then you have the tooltip sound id your priority and your loops the sound id is kind of easy it's what kind of sound effect you want to play so we the ones which we well created beforehand then the priority it's you can completely forget it just say one zero or two thousand doesn't really matter it's, it's completely arbitrary and then loop this is kind of important so what does happen after the sound has played to the end should it loop so should it start from the beginning so this is good for your music files but of course for all your uh, sound effects uh, you just play that once and then be gone so this is how that works so just say zero or false it doesn't really matter because it represents the same and then we are pretty much done with the basic stuff here a few things which you can do is for example change the gain so let's say you say like hey i want to have of all and this is the caveat of all the sound effects which are well this sound here i can change the gain and gain just means volume so you can change the volume and here when you checked out the tooltip the index once again the sound effect then the level so from zero to one where should it go in the future it could be instantly so we just we say zero so instantly in this kind of time set it to zero so we instantly would mute or for example we would instantly set it to full so here to full volume which is well 100 percent or let's say 5000 that's five seconds and five seconds go up to the volume of well 100 percent this is what it does so you can use it for muting fading in fading out as you wish so instantly or just over a time pretty neat little effect then we can ch check out if the music is playing so for example this dude here then we can stop it if we like just a little caveat if you use the generic name of the sound file all and i mean all the sound files are being affected maybe not what you want to do so what you can do is just store it into a specific uh, variable and then use this variable so let's say i just want to change this one up up here or i just want to check if this in one unique thing which i played before is still being played and then i, I want to stop it so here um, you just apply it to one specific file so this is the, the difference between all or just storing it into an id and then well in a variable and then just using it once then let's go to the last part which is not essential but actually a pretty neat thing they actually changed a few things so once again these things in brackets are optional but they are pretty cool so the first thing is gain so without uh, audio uh, sound gain we can actually instantly change the gain so the volume of the thing so let's say 0 0.5 and then for example we play our audio file then you would set it instantly to well 50 percent which is pretty neat um, and uh, handy to use it faster then offset this just means hey um, at which point should we play it so let's say if you say zero then it starts at the very beginning but let's say 10 it starts at 10 seconds of course this sound file is not 10 seconds but let's say uh, two three then it would actually start at second three and not well zero like it should be pretty cool not sure how useful that is but you can and then here a sneaky little thing is pitch pitch is pretty cool because you can change the way the sound file is being played so you can um have it being um played faster or slower so this is kind of pitch and with that you can do a sneaky little thing which i like to do so let's say uh, you have footsteps and you're playing it i don't know each time and each time you play it you have kind of a different um, random range input there and then the sound file sounds a little different which is sounding then more organic this is pretty cool for footsteps for gun shots and so on so just to give the sound file a little bit of a nuance very very powerful in my opinion so here 
um, use and abuse this one. This is a pro tip for one up India, but of course everybody else knows that also, but hey, uh, here you go. And then one last thing, if you have kind of normalized your sound files into let's say one mold, then what you can do is audio ma master gain and that thing defines your overall volume. So let's say you set it to one, then your volume is at 100% and then you set it 0 0.5, then it's at 50% and all your sound files are being affected. So this is outside of it. So basically all your sound files are being lumped into one fat group and this group can be, you know, changed. So this is, this is what that actually means. And therefore, um, if you just adjust your things like here and here you just have one master volume, then actually you can because that is taking um, this default setting into account, which is pretty cool. So I do like that. But besides that, mm, not very useful because once you separate your uh, music and your uh, sound effects into two different groups, which most games do, because normally you have a master gain and then you have a gain for so a volume for sound effects and uh, music files, which is kind of a common standard. Then that thing, well, you can kick it out, and uh, that thing playing around here, you can kick it out as well. So this is the bad news. But once if you have normalized it into one kind of mold, one level, one a normalized level then you can actually uh, use it. Alrighty, that was it from my side. Hopefully that was more or less a comprehensive guide for all of you, just a quick and dirty thing. And see you maybe in the advanced version. Have a good one. One up indie.